Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Uh, I don't understand. Why did you get the 10 through 1 there? Did you notice that? Yeah! <laughs> Those are the most exciting of all numbers. Mm. Hello, um, we'll, everybody! We'll get to it, but don't mm. worry. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi! Hi. I am Mike Delicio. Hello, everybody. Okay, so first of all, the apologies. real reason why anyone's here. Right? Apologize about our slight <laughs> delay here. We had some technical difficulties. Support our Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to everyone supporting our Kickstarter. We would be remiss in not mentioning that it is live currently, and you can find it at DicetowerKickstarter.com, right. as 857 of you have already. Nice. So, very nice. Okay, so top 100 games of all time is myself Excited. and Z. Yeah. That, that's it, actually. <laughs> Mike is here as the people's champion. The voice of the people, you might oh, say. Oh, Don. That's vo- normally my gig. Well, you know. Why well, you stepping on my toes? New, new blood. New blood in the building. Old blood Young. in the building. <laughs> Young. <Okay. laughs> yeah, vibrant. <laughs> spry. <laughs> <laughs> All no, right, fine. You they know never what? use the word it. vibrant and spry about young people. I'm just saying. I'm like, he's a spry young man. You watch me true. leap up on this table any moment from now. I could see that, That's actually. Right. But all right, fine. You will be taking over for the People's Choice Top 100 on this video. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're doing 100 through 91 today. And, uh, you know, we'll continue one of these pretty much every day. So tomorrow you'll see the next chunk and so on. Uh, so there's a, a couple things that we need to start with when we talk about this. First of all, um, the People's Choice was voted on by maybe you, you, many of you. You know what you did. You mm-hmm. went in there and you were able to rate up to 25 games. There are many people, I don't actually have the exact numbers, um, who voted on this. We've been keeping track of it several years. Uh, we may disagree with your choice. Mm. That doesn't invalidate it. Now, I'm not. I'm saying that to the people. I want to be clear. If I disagree with your choice, I do want to invalidate you. It's, in, it's not valid, right? My opinion. And it's, suddenly, it's Mike's job to defend yes. your choice. Actually, maybe not. <laughs> I feel compelled to defend the people. Even, even there I'm. You go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Mike's right. like, yeah. Even I can't agree with this. <laughs> I'm sure it's their great picks. Yes, fantastic. And also, again, at this point, Z's played and me have played thousands of games. Yeah. So in the top 100. 100 is still really high. Like, really high. For me, I feel like my 100 through, like, 85 is a garbage. (laughs) And then you're going to get a couple of halfway decent Mm. picks in there, and Mm. eventually, once we get to, like, say, 40 through 1, those are pretty all right games. (laughs) So, this year, I... As always, I threw away my... Not threw away, but I hid my list, Mm. didn't look at it at all, wrote my list out, and then compared it. Because I don't want to be influenced. I did all of that too, except for the comparing it part. So you don't even know what your last year numbers are? No, nope. I do not know. I'll be printing them out. So mm-hmm. next, next, right, next ten, you I'll can be do like, that. But I honestly what? know my, my a big philosophy of the way I did this this time was going into it fresh. I did not look at anything old, which I don't normally do. Does anyway. that mean you might have missed one then? If I did, I just it deserved to have been missed. <laughs> well, okay, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Possibly. When I did this, when I did the same thing, there was like two games and I was like, oh, that's right. I forgot all about that game just because it was in a corner somewhere. Well, that sucker's out. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have been that good. <laughs> Any good game in my house is on a pedestal. Behind you have 100 of them? No, I have about 40. <laughs> I told you, there's only about 40 good games on this list. The rest, mm. I keep in various boxes. I don't look at them. Mm. There's a lot of jibber-jabber going on. <laughs> All right, so just to clarify what's, how this top 100 is going to go, is this is 100 through 91. Tomorrow, Roy will be covering for Mike, mm-hmm. and That's they'll go good. back better, and forth. Much better. <laughs> much better. You say that till tomorrow. We're going to go from course. very old to very young. We're going to be hitting both of the spectrum there. I like it. We want, mm-hmm. to, we want to go for our teen audience. <laughs> Anyhow, um, once we get to 40, though, Mike and Roy will be doing their top 40 games, so we'll have five lists at that point. Mm. That's a lot of stuff, and we're going to do it only in a half hour, too. We're also shortening. That's unlikely, a but half hour. we can try. All right. 
Are we ready? Are Let's we ready? Let's do it, yeah. Let's make it what order are we doing this thing? It's going to be people, then Z, then me. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Tom Vassels is the one that matters. How many top 100s have you done? That is the opposite. This is my 15th. It's actually not that. Top 100, like, board games? No, lists. This is my 15th list. I've done a lot of lists of a top 100 Tom, things. Tom, we need to uh, make one thing clear, is that it does not go in that order. Oh, what is the order? How many times have you messed up a live stream? <laughs> Am I first? Yeah, yes. it's it's in the order from from the. Got viewers. it. You're right, I, and I even said that. You did. So yeah. the most important is you. That's right. Here we go. Alrighty, my number one hundred here, which I think just made the list this year. Um, Although it was really close to making it last year, I'm not sure what happened. The 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 actual the thing is blank, so I don't know if I got deleted. It mm. doesn't matter. 100 is Shards of Infinity. So I like a lot oh. of deck builders. Mm -hmm. um, I especially liked Star Realms when it came out. I was not as enamored with it as some people were. I thought it was good, but not great. Uh, Hero Realms, same thing. Star Realm Shards. I mean, Shard of Infinity kicked it up a notch for me. I like the. I mean, it's essentially very similar games, it mm. but it had the mercenary aspect to it where yeah. you could pull a card and immediately use it, which I liked a lot. And I also liked that the, um, the leveling up system. You could level up, which made cards better. That's the only two differences, but they were two solid differences. Yeah, yeah. it's a different I, theme, of course, and all that. I like the sci-fi theme. I thought it was a little more differentiated. I, Star Realms feels very generic. It does. Yes. And, and, I mean, yes, I know the blob so. ships, and then all the other ships look the same. Sure. Um, but this one's good. And then in the first expansion, they added like a special power for each of the people, which helped out a lot. So this one's doing well for me, sitting at 100. And there's an expansion, like you said, right? All right there's two expansions, actually. Two already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My 100 is a fairly old game. It's from the 80s, I believe. <laughs> Hang on, I was... <laughs> Why are you doing a spin take? What's going on? Well, was, uh, it's so old. Were either of you alive in the 80s? I don't think you realize how old the 80s is at this point. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're right. I guess. Mm -hmm. What is the year? It is the future now, right? <laughs> the 80s is almost 40 years ago. That's disgusting. Woo. I don't know if it says almost. I'm pretty sure it is exactly No, 40. 1980 is 40 years ago. Yeah, so the 80s is less. is 39 years ago. Yeah. This game came out in 79, that's what I said. There's far too much math going on. It did on not come out in 79. Here. No, I don't know. Sometime in the 80s. It's a game called You're Bluffing. That's the title in English anyway. So it really didn't come out in the 80s? You're Bluffing? It says now? 2002 on the cover. I know, uh, it's that that's version. That's a reprint. <laughs> uh, also, the reprint, which is actually the version I have you see in German there, added a couple of extra things. I played both. I like the game, the original game. And I think you like this game too, Tom. This is a... Uh, oh, I love this game. This is a trading kind of game. It's a, it's a you know, uh, there's a bunch of auctions you are going to do. The game is very boisterous. There's a lot of, you know, competing for trying to give someone some money for an animal they're auctioning. And then, later on in the game, you're also going to be sort of pushing each other into a corner trying to make a complete set of animals. You know, if, if Mike's got uh, two cows and I have the other two, there's only four, mm. I'll make him an offer with some money for those cows, but it's blind. So like here's, mm. you know, it's quite a bit. Take it. Some of those might be zeros even. Mm. And you can make me a counter offer if you think I'm trying to cheat you. Oh, but you're then, cheating me. You're cheating. No, I, I would never would. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a nice little, again, the bluffing aspect is there. Boisterous, fun, lively game. I really enjoy this one. I've owned it for years. I've actually traded up from one version to another. Mm. Very happy I did. And really you never played stuff. the board game version of this, have I you? haven't. No, I never did play that. I feel like I like the board game, but I feel like you might think it's a step too far. Like mm. it would ruin the simplicity of the mm. game. Okay, I've, I've seen it a bit, but I had never did play it. I like the simplicity. You're right. You're bluffing. Number one. Bitter Up is the name of the board game. Mm. All right, what did the people write? The people <laughs> have spoken. And the people have said that the number 100 <laughs> game. <laughs> this is going to be great. It's going to be a long <laughs> list. <clears throat> it's a game, actually, that I played with both of you I don't think within so. the last couple of months, what? as a matter of fact. We don't play old games. Must be new. No, it's a newer version. Of this one versus many hidden movement game. Fury of Dracula. Fury of Dracula oh. is the people's choice. What number that, 100. What was it last year? Last year, 
It was 140. So it <laughs> went up. Everything that's so dramatic. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to build some suspense. I think that's because it was out of print last year, and the fourth edition came out this that year. And Correct. Back this in. one jumped all over the place because two years ago it was at 72. So it went from huh. 72 to 140 to 100. That is an availability thing, I think. Sure, probably. Sure. There's no expansion. <coughs> there's none of that stuff. It's mm -hmm. old enough where that wouldn't matter. Right. This is an availability problem, yeah. Yeah, now this one, obviously the theme is going to be something that's going to be very appealing to a lot of people. Yes. I personally, if I'm going to play a game like this, would probably prefer Whitechapel because I think it's a little bit simpler. But I know that you particularly like this. I do. I like you, this way better than... Uh, the Whitechapel yeah. one. Yeah. Now, you are a particularly good Dracula as well. I, I, have, to, it, I have to admit. So, if you've got somebody that's, that's really into it. That's what we do in the shadows. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm an emotional vampire. <laughs> 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 so, the People's Choice Top 100 is the Fury of Dracula. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> you are too dramatic. <laughs> I'll calm down. My number nine, 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 <laughs> Whoa, sorry. Should have done a little vocal warm up before uh, you start. You make fun of me, but I, you know. It my number works. ninety-nine. I don't make fun of you. Mm -hmm. My number ninety-nine has been on the list for five years. This is the lowest it's gotten, but I still really enjoy this game. A flicking game, not the first and not the last on this list. Oh wait, it's not the last. It actually is the first. Mm. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to be too dramatic there. Okay, anyway, it's catacombs. Catacombs. The it's catacombs. Mm -hmm. The number 99 <laughs> on your list. <laughs> Tom's number is catacombs. I actually <laughs> just played this weekend catacombs cubes, which has nothing to do with catacombs. Okay, I think they're right. in the same universe. Um, but I've always enjoyed catacombs. I like the different... I, I really especially enjoyed when they switched over from the art, which was very mm. ho-hum in the first edition, to the much... Block your cool art. I like this artist a lot. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's um, a good look. And I like that it... I don't know how this game manages to be a dungeon crawl and flicking at the same mm -hmm. time. It just it just works out that way. Uh, I also like the one-verse-all aspect of it, which is just fun. So, Catacombs, my number 99. All right. My number 99 is a... Uh I guess a bit of a bluffing or group thing game also. That was your last the, one. Mm -hmm. The version, it, it's been published a bunch of times and it has many names. The version, diverse. The version I have is called Pow Wow, but I've seen it called Coyote, I think, and a few different things. That is my version there. Uh, and it is a game in which you put a card in your forehead and you can see everyone else except your own. It's kind of like, you know, uh, well, it's kind of like Liar's Dice-ish a little bit. Yeah, and you can you can uh, you're trying to figure out what the total is among everyone, including you, and you'll only know what's on your head mm -hmm. from what other people are saying. They might be throwing you really awful information, and you have to remember they don't know their own. So that comes into play. Mm -hmm. It's a neat game. I've, I haven't brought this one on in a while, but for for a few months there, maybe like a solid year, it was every time I visited folks and there was a, some sort of get together, this came out. I always brought it with me, you know, and it was getting played consistently. It was getting a lot of love. Mm. This is a really fun game. Uh, I've just had a, a blast with it. It's you make me think. Like, I recently had a party took Liar's Days, too, and mm -hmm. it went over really well. Mm -hmm. But I think this might be the next time I, I go to that same group, I might take this one. Yeah, if I'm going to that setting... This play, I think this goes over better than Liar's Dice. The only problem with this one in particular is you better... I almost feel like there needs to be a reference sheet. Someone always says, oh, I don't remember what yours is. You know? There are yeah. like four special cards, yeah, that you need to know. I just show them before we start. I make sure it's really clear. It's really fun, though. When you have that times two in your head and you see some big numbers and people will go really big, you're like, do I have the times yeah. two? Or are people bluffing? I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. it's... I think I like it better than Liar's Dice myself. Would you consider it a party game? Yeah. 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 It's on shelf 17. Well, there you go. That's the party game show. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. That's the new. That's, that's, that's my new code thing for I, like shelf 17 party games. You do have a copy of this then? Yes. I have the black box one with the actual the bands that no one wants to put on their head. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There you go. Come to a Dice Tower uh, event and you can play this. Pow Wow, my 99. 
All right, the people's number 99. I'm going to take it down a few notches. Don't I, do that. I can, I can learn. Anything but that. <laughs> it's a game that has uh, recently been turned into an app, and I think an it's, app. It, it's, maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe gotten a little bit more. Uh, it's an older game that. Um, Talk about a bunch of old games. I like mm -hmm, this. I like mm -hmm. this. And it's gone down steadily. It, last year it was at 69, two years ago it was at 50. Um, it, okay. It's very highly regarded. It's a card based civilization game. I'm going to make you guys guess on these. You know, I've seen the list at some Glory point, but I, I've, I've obviously forgotten dramatically. Glory to yeah. Rome. It is not Glory to Rome. Much, much heavier than Glory to Rome. Have you through the ages? The ages, indeed. Got yes, it. through the ages. Uh, wouldn't you say though that the, the the release of the app has kind of made this maybe a little bit more talked about recently? I gotta say, or I think so. They reprinted. They reprinted it. Yeah, they changed it up a bit. Mm -hmm. If I make a top ten of games that make me almost not play it anymore, the, like app, the app makes you not play the physical game. <sighs> the app is so good, man. <clears throat> And there's a lot of bookkeeping in this game, and the app takes care of that for you. So, it really does. Um, yeah, I think that this is one of those games that, because apps have gotten so much better at implementing these types of games, that I'm with you. If I'm going to play this game, it's probably going to be on an app. You burnt your copy. I remember that. I, I did. I burnt it, and I stomped on it when I was done. I, I thought remember. that was a little overboard, but I'm a passionate type of We're talking about the iPad man. or the, the <laughs> Now I'm going to stomp the fire out. <laughs> the people believe... In stomping on fire. This yeah. one is actually Box surprising populi. me that this one's so low because I know people like it that much. Yeah. Um, it's been out for ages. I yeah. have. <laughs> no, no, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> I really did not mean to make that pun. I did not mean to do that. Yeah. I would also argue that there are a lot more civilization games out in the last couple of years that are competing with this that I think probably have. I'm saying it's the app. Well, that too. That's fine. That too. So the people's choice. 99 through the ages. So good at that. Well. Number 98 for me was 26 last year, 21 the year before that, and 22 the year before that. So that's kind of a big drop. Mm. Still in my top 100, and this is just because of lack of play. You know, it's a... Uh, it's a game I haven't played as, I don't know if I played at all last year, although I just had someone ask me about it yesterday, and that is Codex. Hmm. This is the two-player oh, wow. game from okay. David Serlin. Mm -hmm. This is a... So someone came to me and said, I heard this is like World of Warcraft, the, the card game. Sure, that's what it was themed as. I have no idea. I don't get that theme at all. It feels more like a Magic the Gathering mm. thing. It's Magic the Gathering mixed with um, Mage Wars, mixed with a few other things and I know it sounds like a whole bunch of mixed with type aspects but it works in this game there are six different schools of magic each school is broken into three parts they're all pretty even you you take a, a school of magic and then you kind of like let's say I take purple the time magic I can then kind of focus on past present or future mm. future is, is my my preferred um, I like it a lot it's a really solid strong game in my opinion really well balanced it's, it's expensive as all get out mm. And it's only two players, which kind of is a choke point for getting it played. Yeah, it's not like, sure. oh, I got a deck, you got a deck. No, right. I got everything, let's pick. But you can pick which cards you play, and it's a little bit of a deck builder. Again, it sounds like a Frankenstein, and it is, mm. but uh, we make fun of David Sherwin a lot for a lot of the things sure. he does in his, his games. But he does know how to make a good game, and Codex is one. Yeah, it's a lot of thought that goes into these things. Mm -hmm. All right, my 98 is a game that gets a lot of garbage for being unattractive, and I never thought it was. This is Ethnos, Ooh. my 98. I feel like we just <laughs> talked about Ethnos recently. Yeah, not too long ago. Mm. It came up in some chat we were having. Um, I like it a lot. I think it's, you know what, when I was putting the list together, the main thing that jumped out at me that I remembered really loving about this game is how well it scales. Mm. This game scales so well. It lists, I think, two through six players. And I have played, I'm pretty sure, two through six players. Wow. Okay. And it just works really well, no matter what the player count is. I don't think I've ever played with six, and I definitely haven't played with I know two. I did. Mm -hmm. I played six at Come On Expo. Ah, mm -hmm. that would smooth, make sense. Real smooth. And I got a copy there. I really liked it. Came home, I played two player. Great. It's amazing. Hmm. It's really great. And that's rare. Uh, it's just a little area control kind of game. Some cards, some special powers. It's a smooth game. It feels uh, 
akin to a Ticket to Ride style mm. game. It's about that weight, about that involvement, but it's area control. And I, I think it's fantastic design, just so clean and enjoyable uh, and and welcoming. It's a, mm. it's a welcoming play style. So I really like it. F knows is my 98. It's fast, too, isn't it? It is fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for a game like that, I, I, I appreciate how quickly it plays. Yeah. The people have said that the 98th best game of all time is also Ethnos. Is not also Ethnos. They have a little more class and taste, Z. Um, do you gentlemen like SimCity? Sure don't. Who doesn't like SimCity? I, you, do you really not like SimCity? SimCity was okay back when I played it in, like... High school, I think. You disgust me. Well, SimCity's okay. What is the thing? Gee whiz. <laughs> Suburbia, Z. Suburbia. I've never, I've never played Suburbia. Oh. Yeah, but Z would hate Suburbia because yeah. he doesn't like city building. I don't. I yeah. really don't. He's a, he's a terror, not a builder. Ah, okay. Like I tear things? Yeah, not a terror, but a terror. A razor. Mm. I raise buildings. Yes. That would make a lot more sense. <laughs> well, Suburbia is a city builder, I like but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's a lot more abstract. I mean, uh, I, I, wouldn't you say, I think of it as more of almost like a, um, a spatial puzzle even than a, than a city builder. No, uh, no, city builder. It's a city, okay, well, it's a city. The people think it's more of a spatial... <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. Yeah, I love how now he can not just like read out the list. Look, but speak for the people, I, man. And I suddenly been, it is Rome. I have been designated, <laughs> duly designated as as speaking for the well, people. Well, the people said, the, the, told me specifically. The people clearly feel this is more of a spatial puzzle than a city builder. But sure, we, we can go with that too. Oh, that's but great. Uh, that's it's great. a game that clearly has uh, had, you know, some. Iterations they've, they've kind of built upon it, and maybe even games we talk about later on are kind of variations on the same game. Uh, it has gone down a bit. Last year it was at number 67. Um, so it is sliding, but again, maybe it's because there are other games that are similar to this that have come along and captured the attention of the people. So for 98, <laughs> this, has been, yeah, this, this has stuck around. I've learned, learned a lot about the people. In the, <laughs> you the are. People and the, people. Yeah. the people are fantastic. My number 97 here has been on my list since year one. And in year mm. one, it was... Like when you were born year one? <laughs> no. AD. 05 was the first time I did this list. Mm. Okay. So it's the been on there since five. 05. And I think back then, I want to say it was number two or something like that. Wow. Uh, now it's 97. Mm. About time. It, it was my once number one game, actually. And that is the ages? Duel of Ages. That's, that's oh, what I meant. That yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm with the ages. I'm just in the duel, not the going through it. Right. Well, the people uh, have said this game is garbage. <laughs> the people this did not show up on the people's the list. People I do not know this exists. It's this Duel of Ages 2. Same. I was thinking about this as I drove to work today about Duel of Ages, and I thought this game, which is, you know, you have different characters from time and place. I remember the sheer excitement when I read about this game mm. online and I saw that it had seven expansions mm. with extra stuff and I thought that is unbelievable amount of content for a game. Mm -hmm. And now, if this game came out now on Kickstarter, I would have looked at it and went nope, way too much content. Yeah, It's really weird. The only reason this is on my list is because I enjoyed it so much back then and I will still play it now and enjoy it, but I don't think I would touch it now had I seen it for the first time, which is weird. Then it shouldn't be on your list. No, I like it. I'm saying I wouldn't have played it to begin with, probably. Okay, I would have been. I, I would have been repulsed let's ask, let's by the amount of comments. What do the people think? What do the people think? The people think that maybe you've just progressed over the years and you've become a different type of gamer. And so that's a nice thing to say. You know, you shut up. I don't know. Fine. Just wait till the next one. I'll the people will be very mean on the next. Good. One. Yeah. Anyhow, Good. People, um, fickle. I still really do <laughs> like this game. I still am in the mood to play. Uh, again, I, I was trying to be as. Straightforward, you know, should this be on my list or not? I still really like this All game. Right. So, but it is lower than it's 97. Been years also. That's pretty good retention. Yeah. yeah. You know. Double right. ages too. My, where are we at? 97. My 97 is a tile laying um, city building ish. Wait Suburbia. a minute. Now. It's not. You'll see. This is the one I actually have always thought to recommend to people who play Monopoly and they're like, 
what kind of games do you play? Mm. This is what I say. Alhambra is what I say. Uh, oh, I was, like, I, I was thinking quad, oh, I I was thought thinking Quadropolis yeah, too, I but okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the reason I do that is because this game, when you boil it down enough, does have some of the same ideas. It's mm. a money management game, mm. in, and everybody kind of gets that part, and you acquire money and then buy things with that money. Not a lot of these sort of little city building simple games or tile laying, I should say. I shouldn't really call it city building. Do that, you know, simplicity of I grab some money, I pay the money and buy the thing from the market. It's it's a very clean concept. And then on top of that, the only thing is a little placement, you know, a little sort of you making sure that your wall is b developing around your little town smartly, uh, making sure you have more of whatever types of buildings you're collecting than the other players around the table. That's it. It's a it's a straightforward design, and it is a good introductory game. One that, much like you were talking about, Duel of Ages for you, for me, has had great retention. Mm. It's a game I've enjoyed for a long time, and it's one that, I think if I'm being honest with myself, hasn't gone up or down too much from when I first played it. Hmm. That's pretty rare, and I think mm -hmm. it only happens with games that are... Um, Dare I say simplistic? Yeah. That's so the first experience is basically the eightieth experience. And if you know, and as long as it's not it doesn't bore you, you kind of For me feel it went the up same. with the expansions. Oh, the expansions are nice. Yeah. I like the expansions, but I don't necessarily always throw them in because I might use this to teach. Sure, but that's what I don't mind is I have that big this is one of the few ones where the big box works well yeah. for me. Oh sure. I can be like boom. Oh, you like the game? Well, here, we'll play with this little tiny module. You see, yes, if I remember, some I of the expansions originally were just mini mini ones, and then they had larger ones as well. They, they, they used to come in small boxes. Queen is like the they transformer have... of expansions. Right, right. They're like, look, these are the little expansions form a module box. Mm -hmm. Put those together, it forms a big box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple I do keep in there, like the diamonds expansion. Mm -hmm. I just keep that right in. I like coins myself. Mm -hmm. Coins are good, yeah. But anyway, it's a great game. I really like it. It's from the... I want to say early '90s. Sounds sounds like a reasonable. It guess. Says it won the Spiel in 2003. Oh, never mind. 2003. <laughs> uh, what am I thinking of then? Early 2000s, I guess, is what I meant. Anyway, I really enjoy it. If you never played it, I would recommend you check it out. That's my '97. Go. You know what the people like? They like two-player like? trading games, and they love camels. I got it. I mm -hmm. got it. That narrows it down to two games, actually. No, that's just one game. What's the other one? Targi? Yeah, not no, Targi. No, well, the Targi has one. camels. Okay. Yeah. It's Jaipur. 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 The, Jaipur. The, this is a this is a a great introduction to just kind of trading games. I think uh, it, it's it's basically a, a, a gateway style game, a filler type game, but uh, that that has that nice hook of of the the camels there. It is. Gone down a little bit. It was at 72 last year, 76 the year before that. Uh, it's at 97 this year, but wow. um, it, it just got reprinted too. As a matter of fact, right. the version we, we are showing here is not the most recent. It's not a tremendously different. It got reprinted since we made this list. Yeah, yeah, basically, hasn't it? No. Just got reprinted now. No, you put the picture yesterday. in like yesterday. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not giving you any favors here, Mike. Look, the people have been too mean to me today. <laughs> well, the people have spoken. The people get a little overwhelmed sometimes when they're trying to find pictures on the web. They may have gotten a little <laughs> bit confused. Uh, Mike's but, losing his identity. <laughs> <laughs> but Jaipur, this is a game that I personally myself like. I've played it with my wife yeah. a number of times. Uh, it, it's one you could really recommend this to just about anybody. Um, I think it's, it's an evergreen. I think so, too. And I was actually very surprised when this game started to gain traction and continue mm -hmm. to do so and stayed in on you know and sort of that word of mouth yeah kept it in the in the limelight it was amazing um to the point that now it's fairly old it's got mm -hmm. a few years on it and it's still got reprinted people are talking about it it's it's getting a lot of traction it feels like one of those games that could have been designed 15 years ago even sure like it's got classic. that like lost cities vibe yeah, yeah. a little bit you know very clean very mm -hmm. cool concept uh yeah yeah that's a good one good job <laughs> All right, my number 96 is a game that's been on the list for like 13 years, although the last three years it's only, it has, it's been in the top 200, not the top 100. Oh, and it's back. 
-hmm. It's back. And again, this one I'm always waffling on because I don't normally play this with the stated number of players. The max players is seven. I normally play this with 7D. And that would be wits and wagers. Ah. Uh. So this is kind of an iffy thing, but I'm telling you, uh, you know, uh, you know, I think it was is this past year we actually ran a couple wits and wagers games. Mm -hmm. We had been getting away from those because our the, the games were getting too big. Mm -hmm. yeah. And back, and I just this game is just so well done. You and I, again, I'll be super clear here. I'm only talking about wits and wagers, the original one or whatever the current version of the original one is. Wits and wagers party and wits and wagers. Kids or family, mm. those are okay. They're fine. But Wits and Wagers, I think the newest version of the original game is Wits and Wagers Vegas, Vegas maybe. Yeah. Either way, that's the one I like the best, where right. you actually bet on mm. whether you, you someone knows the answer or not. Right. And just really great experiences. We had a really hilarious game of that this year at Dice Tower West, or this year, last year. Um, it's the future. <laughs> 2020. I know. Anyhow, this is if, if for trivia games. There's a lot of trivia games now that kind of do this. Or do you kind of know the answer? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of where it started. I think this one's a really yeah. solid game. Wits and Wagers. That's a good one. My it number is. 96. My number 96 is a tile-laying game that is uh, very... Alhambra. <laughs> very new. This one feels like mm. Carcassonne. If, you, if Carcassonne tiles were kind of wedge-shaped. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. What do you think it might be? It can't be the new Azul. That's right. right. Micropolis. Oh, that one, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Micropolis is uh, from my favorite designer, Bruno Catala. And in it, you are drafting tiles and then building a little ant colony around a central tile you've got there. And you're building little paths within those tiles, right? As you, as you connect them, the paths will grow, become new little caverns. You might close some off. And you'll be scoring and taking spe special actions that the tiles are giving you. That's basically it. I like the mechanism that, that has been seen before in plenty of places where you can take the first tile in front of you, or I think they actually allow you to take like one of the first four, and then if you want to go past that, you have to leave uh, your little worker soldier ants behind, something like that. So, you know, you can kind of dig deeper to get a tile that's not available yet. I like that. I like that once you place a single tile anywhere around in, in the circle, you place the first one anywhere you want. From that point on, they have to grow from there. You play, you know, you always have two placements until you make the entire circle. It just it looks cool. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a neat game. It's quick. It's fun. I like the look of it. It's kind of whimsical. I also like it. Just yeah. not top hundred like. Yeah, I really I enjoyed it. I've just had a fun, a fun time with it. So Micropolis. I think it's a great example of a game where the theme could have been something that made it less appealing. I think for some reason mm -hmm. the theme on this just fits, and it it's not something fit. you see 150 times. Right. Uh, and I appreciate that. I've been told here this was 52 on your list last year. Hmm. Oh, really? Uh, we are using crowdsourcing now. Okay. I thought right. this was new. See, I, again, I didn't look at my list. I thought this was not out yet when I did this list last time. But people are not to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> They're just making up numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from the phone. Right, well, had like 15 bluffing games on their list so yeah, far. Right. That's all right. All right, cool. So it's still on there. Mm -hmm. I guess it slipped quite a bit, but I, I still enjoy it. The People's Choice 96 was at 138. A year ago, it was not on the so list. It's moved up. Two years, it has moved up pretty dramatically, um, and it's also had several iterations in just a couple of years. This is a deck builder, a large box deck builder called Aeon's End. Um, wow! So this moved in the top 100. Yes, okay. Yes, it's at 96. Wow. Um, and uh, like I said, I think they've already had at least two big box editions of this. Well, they game. have a legacy version. A legacy it? version, mm -hmm. and and uh, this is one that has really risen in estimation, at least from what I've seen online right. uh, over the last year or so. Uh, yeah. It looks a little maybe overwhelming. There's a tremendous amount of content in the box, cards upon cards upon. But it cards. has a really really good tutorial system. Right. All the cards are in the exact order. They're like, don't shuffle anything. Mm -hmm. Open a pack. Put these six cards here. Put these here. Here's your pre-built deck. Yeah. Turn over the top card. That's great yeah. for people learning. The problem is if you're teaching someone, you can't. I guess you could put all that stuff back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But, but I mean, once you understand, you're like, okay, this makes sense. Then you can pick different decks. And okay, I haven't played this one. Yeah, it's uh, very well regarded. Unique player powers for each of your different, I don't know what there are. Are they mages? Something along those lines. But uh, Humans. Yeah. Humans. De deck builder. Deck builder that's uh, getting more and more popular. 96, Aeon's End. Halfway. My 
95 was 33 last year, which was the first year it was on the list. It's dropped a bit. I kind of I think it's dropped to where it's going to be at this time. I like this game a lot. Not nearly as much as several of the people in our game group, and not nearly as much as the internet loves it. Most popular game to come out last year, probably, and that is Root. Hmm. I still think Root's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Again. Why don't you like it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every year we're like, ah, oh, I still like the game. Um, I have not really e expanded upon in the Root larger universe and all with all the different expansions and modules and things. Mm -hmm. But the base game is still fascinating to me, that it's asymmetrical, four different sides. Uh -huh. It plays fairly smoothly. It's like one of those big giant coin uh, war games, abstracted down, not abstracted, but streamlined down into a better game, uh, or into an easier game. I, uh, so it's like Duel of Ages, but good. Mm. <laughs> right? No, it's only it, four, four things mm. instead it's of not, like a hundred. It's not Duel of Ages at all. It's, this like, is, uh, it's, like vast. it's like a war game, really. Yeah, it's like vast, but good, I think. I think they improved upon that system. Fast is fine. Fast is fine. It's not as good. The root, people feel that Root is a better game than Vast. Well, but the people, I feel. The people. I feel. I'm the people. Talk. Come back to us, Mike. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just milk this. He's going to just leave when we're done. I know. I'm like, ah, oh, the people are taking their exit. <laughs> like, good luck with your show, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, where am I at here? Tom95? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's behind you. No, I can't look. <laughs> All right, my 95 is a game that did not get a lot of love when it came out, did not get a lot of love after that, <laughs> just doesn't get a lot of attention. But it is from a, it's a company that makes gorgeous games. It's Relic Runners. All right, mm. give me his number last year. Go, people. My what? You got people find your number. Oh, okay. <laughs> Relic Runners, I played, I want to say this year, ones only, I think. But it's one that every time I look at it on the shelf, I have... Good memories mm -hmm. of it. It's a game that whenever I do pull out, either just to mess with it and look at it, or to you know actually just sit down and read the rules, or maybe actually play. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy it. I, I it's a lush, you know, production. It is a fun game, and I always over time, if I haven't played it in you know a few months, I start to forget how much is going on. Yeah, in it. I start to think to myself, oh yeah, Relic Runners is kind of like Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. Not really. There's a bunch of special abilities on this little board you have in front of you right. that I have to teach. You know, when I do, I'm like, oh, yeah, wait, there's all the stuff. So while it is not a, you know, it's not a game that is demanding of the players, I don't think it's an, a game that plays itself at all either. I think you do need to put some thought into it. It's not going to be a brain burner, but it's, it's, it's engaging for me. You know, it's mm -hmm. that level of family sort of game plus, right? It's just a little above that. And and Relic Runners is that for me. Alright, uh, the people said yeah. this was your 100 last year. Mm -hmm. Rainer says it was your number one. Yeah. I'm going to go with what the other folks yeah, said. Yeah. 100? Yeah. So it's going up. That's neat. Yeah, I guess it's right That's around. That's pretty much the same. It's the same, yeah. yeah. About the same. That's cool. Okay. I'm glad I didn't look, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't I'm just sort of surprised by my own list, which feels great. It feels like, you know, some people getting lost in their identity over here. <laughs> All right, Judy, what's next? <laughs> the number 95 People's Choice game is one of the, I think, early, highly regarded worker placement games. It does worker placement a little bit. Actually, yeah, I, I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm thinking you would call this worker placement. It was 73 two years ago, 119 last year, and is back in. 95. Uh, it's Keyflower. Auction slash... Uh, no, it's more, I would say, uh, worker placement. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? You're auctioning with those meats. It's kind of like a deck building flicking game. They sure. Re they released another <laughs> version of it. And a number of different versions, yeah. I think it's just getting a resurgence. Key yeah. flicker. <laughs> what is going on with that board? Yeah. There's stuff everywhere there. Mm -hmm. The people like their pieces. It's, um, it's, but it's a game that has... <laughs> It's a game that I've played re relatively recently, actually, um, and and I was reminded that I do like it now. My, I really like the idea of you're picking a particular color meeple to bid with, and that's the only thing, the other color, only color other people can bid with as well. You can be really mean. This can be an extremely interactive euro, really mean, uh, depending on who's playing. Um, but. Um, 
it, I don't particularly like the route building part where you have to move your meeples along your little okay. That is probably the least interesting for me, too. Yeah. But the bidding is fascinating. The bidding is great. Makes no thematic sense. At all. Right. I got some red dudes. So I'm bidding, <laughs> and bidding no one else, you, you have to bid with red. So, yeah, but, but it, it's uh, interactive. I understand, I think, why the people like it so much. Uh, I just wish they kind of took that route building part out of it. Keyflower. <laughs> My number 94 is brand new to the list. It's a very small game, but I enjoy it. It's Sprawlopolis. All right. Mm. What do you got, Zeke? <laughs> Sprawlopolis. All right, cool. My but, number... Oh, I thought Mike would give me some crap there, but did not. Why would I give you... Because I only want to play this solo. Oh, but you're not a solo gamer. Tom. I'm not, all right? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but this is the only solo game... So far on this list. Uh -huh, so far. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually saw a couple people playing this two player. Mm. And I did play it once two player, and I was, it's garbage. No, Just it's one person tells the other person what to do. Yeah. Um, but this game, I was. I played the Circle of the Wagons, which right. I thought was really good mm -hmm. from, from uh, Button Shy. Yep. And I was told that this one was even better. I was like, well, I don't know. And I played it, and I, I, I probably played it like 18 times so mm -hmm. far. I, I played almost every. No, I have. I played every card for yeah. sure, every of the gold cards. And after a while, I started picking the ones I hadn't played yet, just so I want to see how they worked. And man, I mean, there's the different combo of three every time. I've won this decently, and I got whooped so badly. I've got negative scores, I think, in this game. Mm -hmm. It's really well done, and then Quinn had just reprinted a new thing of it. So, really? Yeah, it's it's a real. Yeah, Quinn. Uh, didn't I show you that little magnetic box they built with the? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's really right. cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's well, at least really, you're not a solo gamer. I'm so. not. I'm not. It's a, but it's it's one of the few I'll tolerate in mm. my top 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's quite good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, my number 94 is a card game, a uh, very attractive card game called Elysium. Mm. And Elysium... In it, you are going to be... Um, yeah, explain this one. ...doing a sort of card draft... But while you do so, you have to burn through your resources, taking away specific colors that you have access to, and dwindling the pool of cards you'll be, you'll be able to take. So, for example, my first pool might require me to have yellow and black. These are wooden columns in front of you. I'll take that card. Great. I'll, you know, put it out. I'll pay, whatever. And then I have to remove a column from in front of myself. Any column. I have four, so I might get rid of the blue one. Do and, it. And then the next card I pull cannot include blue in the cost. So I'll take something and now I'll get rid of the yellow one. And I've got black and green left. So you have to manage the cards available with what you want to do. And you have to know the order in which you want to get rid of your columns. You are collecting sets as well. The cards have powers on them as well. And you can mess with I could like say, oh, oh, yeah. Z only has that color left. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. that I would do that, but that's what I heard. That's part of it. I also really like the, uh, this is a weird thing, but the box insert in this. Oh, it's great. It's really neat. Yeah. And you're not using every card in every play. Mm -hmm. you, you pick a few of the decks, shuffle them together, but there are 30 cards or something that you won't play in every game, and those are different from game to game. So I really enjoy it. It's got a good look to it. It's such, a, such an attractive game. Mm -hmm. So Elysium, really cool game, neat theme. I like it a lot. Say what you will about the people, but they're observant, if nothing, and they notice that this is two Matthew Dunstan games in a row you picked. Relic Runners and Elysium are both. You are correct. Yeah. And he's a relatively new Oh, wait, designer, no one told me what he? this was. Oh, this was your 75 last year, so it's dropped slightly. Okay. okay. Again, with, I would say about right. within 30, barely noticeable, oh, unless it's in the top right. 10. The closer you get to the top, the bigger a change is, I think. Which? <laughs> 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 Attention, the first new entry for the top 100 for the people's choice is right here at number Ooh, 94. Same as me. Yes. A, th a theme that I think should be used more often. Azul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Western, our Old West. I already gave you half the title. Western Legends. Western yes. Legends, yeah. Kind of a, a, a sandbox game. Wouldn't you call this a sandbox this is, game? This is cool that this made the list. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of this one. 
This is one of those games I see getting played at conventions. This is true. Yes. Uh, That's a sandbox game. Yeah, yeah, and it's a game that I've noticed that people Especially that when you play in the desert. Indeed. Um, people that enjoy this game play it a lot. Like it's right. it's it's one of those games that you know they're not going to play it once or twice and then put it away for the next new hotness. These are I, I know people that have played this 12, 15 times, right, right. Um, and, and so and it just got a, an expansion relatively recently. I think another one is coming out. So they are clearly supporting the game. Uh, beautiful art as you can see there. And and again, I like this theme, and I'd love to see more games in this theme, especially kind of letting you do what this game lets you do. You know what I mean? Right. You can gamble if you want to. You can rob a train if you want to. You, you can be a good guy. You can guy. gamble if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> you can rob if you want to. You can shoot up all the trains. And if you want to shoot shares, yes, you can shoot them. <laughs> I shot the sheriff. You can steal. I didn't shoot you the deputy. Steal. 94 Western Legends. <laughs> My number 93 is also a Western-themed game. Ooh, Get out. Yeehaw. That's right. It's been on my list f for 10 years now almost. Hmm. And actually, it fell off the list, but then they came out with a deluxe edition from also from Quinted, and it's oh, back on the list. Okay. And that would be Carson City mm -hmm. from 70 last year, 93. Still really like this. Wow. Great worker placement game. Hmm. I, this okay. is a worker placement okay. game that's very in-your-face. It but is. The, but the uh, the new version brought in different personalities that you could take. You take a different personality and give you mm. a special ability for your turn. There's so much variety in a new game, and I really like the theming of this. I'm a big Western theme person, although mm. it's really hard. I, yeah. If I had to make a top ten, I'd have to I'd have to dig a little bit to yeah. get it. Yeah. That's true. Um, unfortunately, but this one I really enjoy. Um, I like the the characters in this and all that jazz, the worker placement part. I just don't like the city building part that much. Yeah, Again, I like the, the city part building part that. too. Oh, you what is? Why do you not like? You live in a country, you <laughs> anti-city boy. What it is? It's this like this towel scores based on having a green here and a purple two away. The yeah, green but this one, one it makes though, sense because it's thematic, like, like the mine score because they're next to mountains. I know, I totally get it. I just. You know what? Ultimately, that that concept isn't that appealing. Hmm. I like a couple of them. I'm gonna. You're right. You like a couple, and I know there's probably one on your list. And I'm gonna mention it when it comes. Here up. we go. There's one right now. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. My number 93, The Phantom of the Opera. Ooh. <laughs> In it, you are building a city using your imagination <laughs> at the opera. Mm. Oh, inside your the mind. City rises. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera, or Les Fantômes de l'Opéra. Oh, maybe. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> There's a company called Sorry We Are French. Yeah. I should say Sorry I Am Cuban. <laughs> I can't speak French. Um, <clears throat> this one is a two-player only game that uses the um, sort of in the Mr. Jack mm. line of games. And in it, one person is the Phantom impersonating somebody else. And uh, one of the two players knows who that is and they're trying to keep that character hidden. So that the other player, the one trying to deduce who that is, can't do so within a time limit, a number of turns. And I enjoy it. The movement system in this is simpler mm. than Mr. Jack. Uh, it, this is, if somebody wanted to check out those games, that style of game, this whole two-player deduction thing, mm. uh, I would say if you're comfortable with games, pretty much, you can skip Mr. Jack Pocket. And started this one because it's the same system, but the movement is simplified. You should be fair. If you have Mr. Jack Pocket, you should throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Mr. Jack Pocket is a good game. It is awful. Are you crazy? What do like the people think? The people have no knowledge <laughs> of Mr. I Jack Pocket. I, I can't do that. Don't be the people. <laughs> <laughs> We're not ruled by the mob here. <laughs> anyway, I really like this one. I think it's a, it's a cool game. I enjoy it a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, it was off your list. Last year, uh -huh. actually, the last time it was on your list was in 2014. There you wow. go. It was number 45, but it's back. I rejiggered stuff. He, mm -hmm. he went silent for a while, then he came back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Z's list. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> I do like it. It's a fun game. 93. The People's 93 has gone down a bit. Uh, it has been on, uh, it was at 59 two years ago, okay. 51 uh, last year, and it's down to 93. Uh, remember how I said earlier? that Suburbia has had some games that are kind of spin-offs of that system. This would be one of those. This is Castles of Mad King. Actually, Legend. though, what was Castles last year and Suburbia last year? 
Okay, Castles last year was 51. Suburbia was uh, 67. So okay. no, they're still in the okay. same order. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a similar situation where it's kind of a, a tile placement and you're building out a castle and it's got, uh, you know, <sighs> I haven't played this, if I'm honest. I've played Suburbia, but I've not played Castle. The people, the people champion lies. The people have heard good things. The people just have I not. I shall run him through. <clears throat> the people haven't been at a game day where it was there, but the people have heard good things. <laughs> the people have access so, to a pretty big library they where do I'm pretty now. sure the game is sitting. The, the people now the have people no excuses. The people are talking about himself in the third person. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've heard I've heard that it kind of takes that same system and just kind of builds upon it a little bit. It's a What's tile suburbia? laying. You're yeah, building yeah. a castle. No. So you are, no. But then the tiles, you're buying them. Mm -hmm. So if it's my turn, I will, you know, get a few and I will set prices for them. Oh, this has that master And then, you know, thing, Tom right? will buy one and people will buy one. Yeah. And then eventually from what's left, I can buy one. I'm the one who set them up. Got it. But you get the money from the ones we buy. Okay, it's been a while. I played it, I think, It sounds once. like Isle of Sky almost. I love Sky, yeah. I love ponds. <laughs> Isle of Sky. The, oh, the I got it. Yes. Game okay, where you're setting yeah. prices, and uh -huh. you know you have to be able to afford it if you if you yeah I don't know. It's Thank great. you, people. The, the people on. are confused. <laughs> Number ninety two is pretty close to the same place last year. It was eighty five last year, and that was the first year. This is one that has definitely fallen out of love on the popular side of things. It's a legacy game. But it's one of the few legacy games I'll play after the game is over. It's the only Stonemaier game that's not like super popular right now. And that's oh, Charterstone. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I like this game. I thought the legacy part of it was okay. Sure. It was it was like learning to play a fairly interesting worker placement game mm -hmm. a little at a time. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But once I'm done with that, the final board in which then I made my own custom board out of the recharge pack. It's a solid worker placement game. Right. Yeah. right. And I, the one thing that's dumb about this is I can't even like explain what parts right. of it I like because I don't want to spoil it. Um, Did you like the worker placement Darth part? Darth Vader's looks dad. <laughs> um, Wait, dude. <laughs> what? Mm. Um, I have a spoiler for you. Kylo Ren is a punk. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, um, fine. Charter Stone. It's a worker placement game, and I agree with you. I think the the game does feel the legacy part does kind of feel like you're learning very slowly. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're not one of those people who needs a legacy game to be like revelation right. after revelation, body slam with everything you knew was upside down, then it's okay. But if yeah, you but want I like that the game story, a lot. Yeah, if you want that story, you're not really going to You'll get notice it. that legacy games are dropping off my list as mm -hmm. time goes by or dropping lower on my list because Oops, I'm done with them. them right? yeah. But yeah. this one is not on my list because of that. It's on it because I still like the actual game. I have a custom version of this in the Dice Hour Library. You see me at a convention, mm -hmm. I'll play it with yeah. you. It's fun. It is a fun game. And we were talking earlier about games where they've got kind of these uh, tutorials built in. To me, the legacy aspect of this game is almost a tutorial for yeah, the game. A little bit. You know what I mean? If you had the complete rules for this game at the beginning, it would seem overwhelming, but it does not seem overwhelming when you're in game 10. Well, he even called Tuscany Legacy for mm -hmm. Viticulture yeah, when yeah. it first came out, and then he, he quick walked that back. Back, back. yeah. Sure. Because it was the same thing. They're like, play the modules in order. Well, mm -hmm. no kidding. Now, I know there's some legacy aspects in charge, though. You wrote stuff on sure, cards sure. a little bit. You put yeah, stickers yeah, yeah, on yeah. a board. Yes. But, you know, I wonder... If I would play a version of it where instead of putting stickers, you just brought out a bunch of tiles, made a board, sure. and played on it. Interesting. Yeah, you could. Charters don't express. <laughs> All right. Don't give them ideas. Why not? All right, my number 92 is a puzzle game. It's a real-time puzzle game. That is... Is it fun? A ve I think so. It's a very rare uh, genre for me to yeah. enjoy. This is a game called Uluru in the version I have. They they did reprint in English. They called it Pelican Cove, I think. Man, I'm never going to play this game just because I can't pronounce it. Uh, Uluru. Hmm. Or you can just say Pelican Cove. <laughs> Got it. You can do it. Come on. Uluru. <laughs> Uluru. In this game, you will have a bunch of little plastic pelicans. 
you are going to be flipping over a few goal cards, things you are trying to accomplish, and then everyone has, in, in real time, will try to accomplish those things on their own little board. This, if you've ever played the, uh, from the same designer, they have a trilogy of games. If you've ever played the one that has the spheres you stack into a pyramid, which is called Dimension, that one's popular. That one got reprinted in English, and mm -hmm. it got some traction. If you've played that, it's from the same designer. He uses sort of the same ideas in a few different games, but I think this is the best one. This is the most engaging puzzle. It's the one that looks the best. It's the most fun. Uh, but it is a unique game. It's not going to be for every occasion. I'm not always going to be in the mood to play this for sure because mm. it's thinky. I uh, just enjoy what it presents. When you flip over a bunch of rules that say, you know, the gray pelican has to be across from the blue one. But then the blue one wants to be next to the green one, and the green one cannot be next to pink or white. You're going, okay, but, uh, you know, that's it's fun, but it'll, it'll burn the brain a little bit. What if they were buildings? This blue building can't be next to this red one, but it can be next to the green one. That's fine, but those things don't score. It's not like two mm. points per green. I'm giving Z. I'm giving but like a dollar. Minus That's one it. per pink. You know. Every dig against Z gets money. <laughs> oh man, I wish I'd known that. I hate this video. Whoops. You'd have Kickstarter been hasn't found it yet. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Um, someone said if I if I don't play games, I can't pronounce. I have a very easy life. Oh my. But goodness. But this was actually your. 28 last year. Mm. That, that's a significant drop. It is. It is. It's a weird game. Uh, but I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of it either. It's All that right. kind of game because it's so different. Oh, so it's a kind of game people be like, I'm sure you've never played this. Mm. When you go that's cool, that's true. true. Yeah, I actually yeah. played this at the retreat. Because, again, folks aren't going to know what this thing yeah. is. So is this in the Dice Tower Library? I don't think so. Ah, it's not. Mm. Go ahead. Uluru is also the, the people's favorite character on uh, Star Trek, little known fact. Yeah, Uluru, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 92 has been remarkably consistent. It's a game that has been around for a while. Uh, it is probably, well, I would say, is the most accessible war game out there. Oh, you're about to get chewed up. I don't care what you say. Well, you said I, war game. Well, I think some people are going to argue it wouldn't be a war game. It's certainly a war-themed game. I don't think you can argue with it's that. It's not a war game. It uses the <laughs> commands and color Use system. Who's <laughs> thinking you get away <laughs> with talking about What's war games? What's the game? I don't even know. I can't argue. Memoir, Memoir 44. 44. War game! Come on now. <laughs> war game, right? How is this not a war game? Sure. It says it's not a war game. It's just lunatic. This is not a war game. This is... Plastic soldiers Dudes with on a map. barely rules, okay? It's not a war game. You want to play a war game, you will get Lost Cities, the board game, <laughs> in the original edition. Celtics. 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 That's, That's a war game. That is. That you is. go for blood. Mm-hmm. Kinesia, yeah, a well-known warmonger. Uh, Memoir 44, card-driven game, commands and colors system, uh, you know, where you kind of got the left flank, the middle, and the right flank, and you're sending your troops, and, uh, you know, I'm not really into war-themed games all that much, but mm -hmm. this is a game that I've played and enjoyed. What if uh, it had a city-building theme? Uh, the people would like it even more. If you were destroying cities, that would even be better. <laughs> The people would like. Okay. Well, the people are kind of bloodthirsty. Yeah, I, know, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the people have seen, uh, you know, the promise of money, and they want to get in on. What that, was this so. last year? That oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it was 80 last year and 82 two years ago. So That's it has insane, gone down a bit, man. but it's been. That's very pretty close, right? Yeah. Very consistent. This game is an evergreen for sure. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, and it's the best war game I think out there. I think actually. That's right. I'm changing my tune, <laughs> baby. When we were kids, you know, I was just talking to some people. They were talking about board games who didn't know anything about board games, mm. and I was just like, this the whole time, you know, because they were right, talking about sure, sure. Yeah. And they were talking about Risk, and how the, oh, the strategy game Risk, and then I, I actually said something. But um, <laughs> just couldn't help yourself. Axis and Allies then comes after that. That's my childhood game. Mm. This is going to be the childhood yeah. game of a lot of kids, I think. I think you're for right. war for war games. They'll be like, oh yeah, I played my more 44. I mean, it came out. In uh, 05, I think, somewhere around there. Oh, right, oh, after, right after... Took it to ride. They were right next to each other. Yeah. It was a double punch. Five, yeah. Yeah. So that's 16 years already, so it easily could be a game kids played already. Yeah, 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 and it's, you know, the, for Days of Wonder to put it out, too, with the production that they are going to always uh, do. And it's interesting. I mean, it's an outlier, wouldn't you say, in their, in their catalog? In, in the theme? I do it, think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is when they had that idea of, like, we're making games that are meant to be heirloomy kind sure. of games. Yeah. Took it to Ride had that feel, Definitely. historical feel. Mm -hmm. 
And this did, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there were a few early games that had that heirloom vibe. Sure. And then they sort of drifted away from that, really. But I agree with you. I think this will be that kind of game. Yeah. That's cool. 92. One more! My number 91 has been on the list for two years. It was 42 and 67. The first year it was on the list. It was called Tief Tashin. Now it's called Good Critters. Mm. Okay. Um, this one here, yes, it's a Dice Tower Essential, but yes, games become Dice Tower Essentials because I like them. <laughs> it's kind of, of a circular loop. Um, huh. <laughs> good, good Critters um, is, a, is a game in which you're basically sitting around a table splitting up money after a loot. And you're all going to basically, one person is in charge of splitting up all the money. Is it you? I bet it's you. It mm. could be me, mm -hmm. but then we can vote on it, and it's possible that you would oust me, and it now becomes you. Mm. That's right. Which would never happen, mm. of course. I really like the game. I like the back-and-forth negotiation that this game has. It has a, it's a little bit like Cash and Guns without the, the yeah, guns. Yeah, you're right. It's a yeah. talking it's, it out yeah. Cash and Guns. That's yeah, true. but it's definitely... It's everyone plays a card. It's a slightly complicated rock, paper, scissors. There's definitely you have these tokens you can just put in front of somebody else, and then they make you might be blackmailing them, you might not. Right. And it's really entertaining. I'm really surprised this one hasn't got more buzz. I really like it. It feels like the direct sequel to Sheriff of Nottingham, in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has that same kind of category, but I really like it. So Masters. my number 91. Mm. All right, Z, we've been waiting to hear your number 91. I'm not going to tell anybody my number 91. Why? Guys, I want to remind people that a Kickstarter is happening right now, and I am holding the audience hostage. I Ooh. will not tell you what my number 91 is, or, for that matter, 90 through 1. Oh, until okay. we hit 50,000. All right, let me look. That's We're at 67. Oh, okay, all right. Number 91. <laughs> Here we go. I'm, I'm giving you You should have went higher, Z. 91. You shot too low. 90 and 89. Wow. Here we go. You're getting all those. What? I'm ruining this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? You made the slides. Uh, oh, man. My number 91 is a uh, murderer's game called the Bloody Inn. Oh. I, I cannot support this. <laughs> It's murderizing. Murderer. <laughs> it's basically it's a card game. It's a small card game from Pearl Games, company that after this was the first game that put them on my radar. They've made a bunch of great games mm -hmm. after this. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this one, you're running a small inn with a few rooms in it. People come in to stay for the night. They give you a buck, you know, or whatever. And the next day when they leave, or they might. Check in and not check out. Mm-hmm. Because if so I notice I have a lot of money. It's called the Hotel California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Welcome to the Hotel Murder Phone. <laughs> <laughs> Such a lovely corpse. Sometimes you can kill people, steal all the money in their pockets, mm -hmm. and uh, then you have to bury the body. If You have to make sure that the cops don't come by and stay in your rooms. While there's a body lying around, which is kind of weird, but because I'm like, I guess I'm leaving it like in the foyer. You know? like, oh no, it's fine. Well, the cops check all the rooms. I guess maybe that's it. Um, you can also use the cards, of course, the characters for special abilities. They can uh, help you out. You can pick them up from the board and you know put them to work for you. Have accomplices. I enjoy it. It's a weird theme. I know it's kind of tongue in cheek too. It's not grisly, right? It's not a. It's not a scary game. It doesn't seem. It doesn't come across gory. It's just sort of spooky, cartoony, ah, kind of murder. But I do like it. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. And there With was a an red expansion. box cover that seems to be splattered in blood. Yeah, there was <laughs> an expansion for this, a small expansion that I really enjoyed also. And I wasn't expecting much from mm -hmm. it, but I really liked it. So yeah, the Bloody Inn is a quirky one for sure. It doesn't come out that often. Mm -hmm. But every time it does, I go, hmm, this is a cl this is a small game that feels bigger than yeah. it is. And it always gives me that feeling. It's very so. clever. It's also a really good solo game. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I, I don't play <laughs> no solo games. No one cares about solo games, <laughs> I, I, Mike. It's I'm good. not a solo gamer, yeah. much like Tom. Uh -huh. so. You actively dislike <laughs> Solo games and, and solo who gamers. Plays them. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, Wait, I've heard. What? I've oh. heard daily. You're safe. <clears throat> you're not a solo gamer. Okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. Number ninety-one for the people is um, 
It wasn't on the list last year. It was at 135. It was not on at all two years ago. But it's actually a very old game that has been reborn, so to speak. You might say restored. (laughs) You might. Thanks. The people might say it's been restored. This is a racing game. A racing game. Yeah. Downforce. Downforce. That's Um, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. This is a game that the people have played a number of times and have never even crossed the finish line. Really? Never crossed. Have you ever How won How do you manage that? I, you know, you'd think it would be hard to do, but I've done it on three different occasions. Have you won? No, no, no. no. He never. I, he has never crossed, crossed the never finish crossed line. You can you win can. if you don't cross the finish line. You bet look, on someone else and look. then hope that they bet on other oh, people. Oh, you're right. You're right. Do you not game? Oh, I forgot about that because I always straight up cross that finish line. The people believe in themselves. <laughs> the people believe in themselves, and they're going to double and triple down. Their car must get to the front first, and no, they never even. Do you really do that most of the time? I really, really do. You really don't know how to play this game. You're bad at this. Dude, this is what I do. I start. I look for Jason's car, and I'm (laughs) both and I have a single time. Done. Yeah. The people never claim to be good at games, but this is a good game. Uh, Downforce is is, uh, interesting because. It's a race game that actually really feels like a race, and and sometimes I play race games that don't really feel like races, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah. there's this disconnect between the theme and the mechanisms. This one doesn't have that disconnect. It's fast. It plays quickly. Um, it's a game that I think anybody can pick up. It has that betting aspect, which is nice because, like you said, it doesn't have to be your own car. If you're not looking good, if your hand of cards is bad, or if you're just maybe not a terribly good gamer. Uh, then you might bet on somebody else. One of the days, one of these days, the people will learn this, but uh, they're slow. People, so far, they're the slow people on the are, are okay. As soon as this is over, we have to have a therapy session. <laughs> 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 What's your name? The people. Nope. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of thing. Got it. <laughs> Shock that <therapy>. people. <laughs> treatment. Yeah. What's your name? The mm. people. <laughs> That's right. Downforce was in the uh, it was in the original set of games that Restoration put out, correct? It yes. was this yes. and the uh, Indulgence and uh, Stop Thief, and Stop Thief, whatever right. that's called. And this was the best of the three, correct? I think, this and this is still. It's a great game. It is. Fireball Island is very popular because of the sure. size and all that, but this is the one I see played because it's so easy good, to pull so out. Good. And they're continuing to add maps, yes. so it's it's good good yes. stuff. All righty, well, that is the first 10 of 100 of these. We're going to be doing another list tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, then four more next week, same days. And then on the Monday, Tuesday following that, we'll be doing the top 20. We really appreciate all of you watching. We appreciate Mike coming in and helping us. If you like the Dice Tower, seriously consider backing us at DiceTowerKickstarter.com and or tell your friends all to do so. Um, we try to make all our content free for you throughout the year. And this is the only time we ask for some back. Either way, come back to hear at least one good top 10 100 <laughs> list tomorrow. Actually, I'm, I'm, you know what? You made me dislike the people is all I'm saying. Woohoo! Mission accomplished. What? <laughs> Why would you say that about the people? <laughs> People's been working out. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks. I'm Mike Delicio. And oh, have people. fun gaming. I'm the people. People. <laughs>